So that's what I did with my summer vacation. That's what I did from March until, and no, seriously, from a metaphysical standpoint, I was looking for something to do that would actually impact kids more. And reality TV, I don't even own a TV, but I, I really don't. And, but I, they found me because of my work with kids. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. And I did it because I wanted to go out and sort of witness to kids about science. Most of what we did was building. It was building how do we make things, and it was all around this green theme. You know, we had to get water. We had to purify it. We had to make filters. We had to make, uh, I eventually made an ozone water purifier. We made all sorts of green things, solar trackers, like this is, I was, this is all made out of junk, old scaffolding. We made a solar tracker. This thing was giving us 1,600 watts of green power, and they show how to make it on the show. And I am getting hundreds, maybe thousands at this point, of emails from kids going, nice solar panels, man, I want to make one. I, I wish I could help them all, but it's getting through. Now, uh, here's a particularly interesting build that I really like. This is, uh, we built a generator out of an old gasoline motor. But we didn't have gas, or we didn't have very much gas. John's idea is called a wood gasifier. So we made an, a generator that was fired by a wood. A wood gasifier consists of two containers, each filled with wood scraps. The wood in the first container is used to build a fire. The fire heats the wood in the second container, releasing a flammable vapor made of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane, known as wood gas. Uh, and I actually looked this up a long time ago, but I've never actually built one. I if it's her. successfully producing wood gas, the engineers will be able to light the vapor coming out of the nozzle. Burn it! Burn it! The nice thing is they even showed us when we failed, which is really part of the engineering process. It's probably part of the design process too, right? This is only water vapors. Only water vapors. Vladimir has an idea on how to achieve the heat they need. This yeah, right. that's inside here. Okay. The gas fire's fuel container needs to reach 451 degrees to start producing wood gas. What do you One know? way to increase the temperature would be to place the wood container directly inside the drum. Okay, what do you think in there, you guys? Torch the end of this thing, this pipe, and the big question: Will it run? So off the of idea is to use this fire. vapor to power because our our gasoline power like generator. It was gasoline engine gas with just a car alternator. Goes straight into the carburetor. And I thought if it didn't work, they wouldn't show it. Okay. But check this out: it, it actually it worked. And this was an amazing thing for us. And in the blogosphere, now there's this huge discussion about making wood gasifiers. And it was like, wow, you know, the whole idea of actually working with your hands to build stuff that was really going to make a difference in the world has really, really resonated. Now, not all of the builds that we did were about green. We, made, we had some real fun. Last week, no, two weeks ago, we made an electric solar-powered vehicle that went about 45 miles an hour that was really fun. We made a real working transmitter and receiver. We made a, a Tesla coil just like this, actually not quite as pretty as this, to purify our water. And we made a record player and a, 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 a movie projector and a bunch of other things. It's amazing what you can come up with if you turn off the fact that you're constrained. The, my favorite build was this one. Um, and it was about... We used to have all of these bad guys coming to, to harass us. They were actors. That was the only fake part about it. But I had to make weapons. Here I am, a neurotic Jewish guy. You know, I can't make weapons. My love of science. And I was dreaming about a flamethrower idea that I'm hoping to build. If you were to light something at the end of a propane, you'd get, you could get a pretty, pretty good feather. But it won't go very far. Right. This will give a big. I'm going to make this for the demo because I'm running out of time. John's going to build a propane fueled flamethrower with the help of a solenoid valve he found in the warehouse. A solenoid valve is an electromechanical switch that opens rapidly when charged with an electric current. Oh, yeah, Mr. Obvious. Hook up this barrel. You want it long enough, you're able to jam it through a window. We'll have a handle here with a trigger. 
the business end of this thing will be out like that. And you'll be able to kind of articulate it. Every bit, guy's dream. Please don't try this at home. Over the marauder's heads, and if they don't back off, you fire it at them. Hey, watch out for it. Is it still flaming? Yeah. With all the parts assembled, it's time to test the flamethrower. Not enough volume. You don't have enough voltage on your battery to open up the valve. Take the one out of the truck. It, sh it should be good. Next, John C. demonstrates the flamethrower for security foreman Joey. I like the look on his face. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to get a... I don't know if the girls like that as much as the guys do, but... This is huge for us. This is really good. Two points, Professor. So... So my secret in terms of redesigning, of doing the design of this whole industry and stuff, is anything that ends in don't try this at home, secretly the most subversive and wonderful thing. So I think I was just going to end on, I was going to try a don't try this at home. I need an extra hand. Um, so I just built this while we were watching the movie. Uh, yeah, come on up, young feller. But I'm convinced that we, we've become so complacent. We teach to test. We do. Can you give me three seconds of that? Uh, here, what is that? Is that aqua fresh? Great. Okay, let's do that. Okay, one, two, three. Excellent. You've done that before, I can tell. But <laughs> if we can get away from teaching to the right answer and don't touch that, you might get hurt. And go back to the sort of people working in their basements to build stuff, I think we're going to be much better off. <laughs> So, I guess, in closing, now, getting this, getting this on an airplane is an interesting thing. So, it was really interesting because this was my, this was my uh, deception, as I said, this isn't dangerous, because this isn't really dangerous, but this is horribly dangerous. And I used this, it was resting right over that, to hide the fact that I was making, a, had a handmade firearm. Um, but... You know what? You have to actually break a few rules if you want people <laughs> to actually go into your field. And then just in closing, I guess I would like to try, say is thank you. I would really like your input, you know, maybe in the, in the ne next couple of things, to try to figure out how do I get this message out? I was really taken by Emily's message about, you know, responsible design. And there are organizations like Engineers Without Borders. Uh, I really would like to try to get some of your energy to try to figure out how do I not just remarket what we've got, but actually rethink it. And like I say, you know, please try this at home, okay? Thanks very much.